The next feature we're going to look at is the nucleophile. And the nucleophile is going to be very, very important because it is nucleophilic substitution, but the nucleophile is most important in the SN2 reaction because SN2 requires a strong nucleophile. Why is that? The nucleophiles involved in the rate determining step. And it's the nucleophile that helps in displacing the leaving group. For the SN1, on the other hand, you need a nucleophile, but it can be strong or weak. It doesn't matter because it's not involved in the rate determining step. Now, in general, for SN1, weak nucleophiles are the most common because uh, those tend to lead to SN1 reactions where strong nucleophiles um, are reserved for the SN2 reactions. So to learn our nucleophiles, we're going to look at two different categories. We're going to look at negatively charged nucleophiles and neutral nucleophiles. So what are some negatively charged nucleophiles? Well, we can have halide ions, FCl, Br, or I. We can have oxygen anions, things like hydroxide or alkoxide. And remember from our discussion of nucleophiles, it could be written as the negatively charged nucleophile or it might be written with a counter cation. But if you see you know, R bonded to oxygen with a sodium, think of that as sodium plus O minus. Break that apart. Um, we can have nitrogen nucleophiles. So nitrogen with a negative charge. Um, another common nitrogen nucleophile is CN minus. Uh, one that you used earlier in the semester is the acetylide ion. And then you can have sulfur anions. Neutrals tend to be a lot of the same atoms. Uh, for example, you can have neutral oxygen nucleophiles like water or alcohols because remember those do have lone pairs that are nucleophilic. Likewise, you can have nitrogen nucleophiles Let's give you a couple of different amines those are all nucleophilic. Um, and then sulfur. That's a neutral nucleophile. So don't think of this as a huge list to memorize. Really just keep in mind something with a negative charge generally is um, a negative nucleophile. Something with a lone pair is generally going to be a neutral nucleophile. Notice that with these neutral nucleophiles we do have protons on the atom with a lone pair and that's because after it adds we have to lose that proton and we'll see that when we do some examples. So now how do we break these down into strong or weak? There's a lot of gray area um, as far as relative strength like for example in these negative nucleophiles, this acetylide ion is a really strong nucleophile. The halides, not quite so much, but we're going to generalize as far as what's strong enough to do an SN2. And all of these negatively charged nucleophiles are strong enough for an SN2. In addition, I'm going to circle one more in the other list. The neutral sulfur nucleophile is strong. The rest of these neutral nucleophiles, those are weak. So that's a good generalization. 
If you see one of these nucleophiles, most likely it's going to be an SN2, but it could be an SN1. If you see a weak nucleophile, SN1 is your only option. These can't do SN2 reactions.